ensuring that the cable does not exceed its minimum bending radius. We'll now start looking at the different catalogs as per uh, different manufacturers. If you go through your different manufacturers, in this case, I'll be talking of uh, Doha cables. You go through Doha cables, you look at the different list of their different cable sizes. You see the overall diameter as well, based on the different sizes. It could either be two core, the size of the cable, maybe two core 1.5 square mm cable. It could either be two core 16 square mm cable. It, it could either be three core 16 mm cable. It could either be four core 16. So it depends on the different sizes of the different cables. So all the different sizes of the cables come with a different overall diameter. So if you're taking the construction, the minimum bending radius, it varies with the different sizes of cables. So after computing, you ensure that it does not exceed its minimum bending radius. Good everyone, you're watching Makoga Enterprises. Today lesson is going to give us guide and to give us different procedures on how to carry out an electrical inspection request. And what are the different things that you take into consideration while carrying out an electrical inspection request? So this uh, video I have made, which is based on the experience that I've had in the past, as well as um, I put different methodologies, which when you follow strictly, and also make sure that you follow as per the different projects which you are managing which is as per the project specification. The real lesson is going to be on inspection request. So I talked of since activities and are divided into four parts, the first fix, second fix, the third fix, and testing and commissioning. Same way also inspection requests should follow. So the same, any way that you have your different um, activities which are carried out on the different projects that you're working on, you need to understand that the different activities as per the way they've divided in the different projects, it is also good for you to divide the same way when you're carrying out inspections for the different activities. It's very important. So that you know exactly if once the, this first part is completed, you carry inspection for that first part. Once the second part is completed, you move now to the second part of the different inspection. This is very important. Note. It can only proceed after method statement for the set service is approved. This is very important. So you have to make sure that you prepare a method statement submit to the consultant for review and approval. If it is leaving from the subcontractor coming to the contractor, you have to review the set method statement before submitting to the consultant for review and approval. I've done a video on method statement. Just hit the method statement in my YouTube page or probably in my Facebook, I've also uh, done a video on uh, uh, how to prepare a meta statement, all the different procedures and the different things that you take into consideration before preparing a meta statement. I mentioned everything in there. So we have uh, the first fix. I move first from the first fix, such as PVC or GI conduit, cable tray, cable trunking, cable ladder. The different things that we have to take into consideration before submitting to the consultant for review and approval. First, we check the installation on site with reference to the approved shop drawing and highlight the completed areas, which is very important. You don't just highlight all the different areas in the installation which you are about to submit for inspection to the consultant. You highlight only the portion which is completed and submit to the consultant for review and approval. This is very important. And then also as well as provide proper red line drawings if any changes on site. So a red line drawing is a, is a replicant of what you have carried out on site. So you adjust or make changes which is being done on site. You do that on in the drawing as well as the red line. You submit now to the consultant for review and approval. This is very important. So for embedded PVC conduit, so you notice that for PVC conduit, while when we are done installing the PVC conduit on site, it could either be embedded or not really necessarily being embedded, but all PVC conduit should be embedded as per requirement. So make sure multiple offsets are avoided. This is very important. 
you make sure multiple offset are avoided. If you see on the graphic, which I've put here, we have the PVC conduit which is installed, and because as you can see, and then the next point which is conduit should not lie directly on slab, which might block conduit after casting and post issues during cable pulling or wire pulling. This is very important. So you tie them as such, as you can see. The conduits are installed and then be tied on this rod. It's not lying on the on the floor. Whereby when conduit, when uh, concrete is being poured, it might damage the conduit after a while, probably when you want to pull cables or wires. So you have to take that into due consideration. The first point, what did I mean mention is multiple offsets should be avoided. The next point is ensure that the conduits are not laid directly on the slab. This is very important. Move to the third point, the next part, which is for exposed J conduits, where we have galvanized iron conduit. So you make sure pull box are provided at multiple in intervals to avoid struggling of cable or wire pulling. This is very important. So as you can see here, we have pull, these are pull boxes. In this case, this is uh, an EMT conduit, which we they have installed here on this graphic. So we provide pull boxes or pull areas well by when we are pulling the cables, we can stand from this point and while pulling from to the other side. Supposing that we have a length of say 10 meters and then we carry out a straight conduit. If we start having bends in certain areas, so we need to provide pull boxes so as to avoid issues while we are pulling cables or wires is very important. Make sure identification labeling are provided on conduit to distinguish different services. This is very important as well. So you ensure that you provide labeling. As you can see here, we have yellow labeling here. We have red, we have blue. So all these different labeling signify different services. So you make sure you go through the project specification and ensure that you provide a proper labeling for the different services. Supposing we have lighting, we have small power, we have fire alarms, we have CCTV cameras, we have to provide different labelings as per the different services, which is mentioned as per the project specification. This is very important. For cable trunkings, tray or ladders, some projects will request only ready-made fittings. This is very important to understand so that if the project they specify only ready-made. So you have to ensure that you follow as per the project specification. If installation is done on site, you go to site, you check the, the set uh, installation of trunking, tray, or cable ladder, ensure that all the fittings are already made, no fabrication. Keep an interval distance between supports, usually not exceeding 1.2 meters between support and like i said it all varies with different projects i'll take you to a graphics this guy over here is carrying out cable ladder and is fabricating on site so supposing you are uh, you meet someone carrying out fabrication on site whereas in the project it requires only ready-made fitting in this case you have to take a photo and you issue a site observation or an NCN if you are the contractor. If you are a consultant, you have to issue an NCR. And then you state there that contractor is carrying out fabrication of cable ladder or cable tray or cable trunking on site, which is not as per the project requirement. This is very important. You see on this other graphic, which is cable tray fabricated. As you can see, this is inside riser. They are fabricating inside riser, which is probably not accepted by the project specification. As you can see here as well, we have a cable trunking, which is fabricated on site as well. So these are just graphics. So we get to see and know the difference between um, fabricated cable trees or trunkings or ladders on site as well as ready mates. So for second fix, why finishing with the first fix, which is not limited to what I, I just mentioned, we now move to the second fix, such as cable pulling or wire pulling. The first point, make sure pre 
decessing activity is completed and approved. So for the pre decessing activities now, we will now go back to the activities that should finish for this other activity to proceed. So before you proceed with cable or wire pulling, we need to finish with the first fix, which is the conduit, the, it could either be PVC conduit or GI conduit, cable tray trunking or cable ladder. So you will need to make sure that the first fix is approved before moving to the next, which is the second fix. Second point, make sure the cables or wires are pulled with reference to the approved load schedule, power single line diagram, which is very important. You take into consideration that if you're working as an inspector, as a consultant, or probably working as an um, electrical engineer on site. So you have to make sure that the installation of that cable or the wires that are being pulled, it should conform as per the load schedule. So you have to highlight all the different areas that have been pulled on the load schedule. You confirm the size of the cable. You confirm the quality of the cable. You make sure that the cable has been approved as well. So all these different steps while you're carrying out the installation on site, you ensure that the materials which you have used in that different activities have been approved prior to installing on site. The third step, ensure cable does not exceed its minimum bending radius. This is very important. If we go through Karama rules and regulation and talk of 12 millimeter, 12 times the overall diameter of the cable, it should not exceed that. Some other projects might tell you maybe eight, maybe six, maybe five, all depend on the different projects. So like I did mention, this is just a, a highlight for you to understand the different steps and how to manage all that. So if you we start talking of um, ensuring that the cable does not exceed its minimum bending radius, We'll now start looking at the different catalogs as per uh, different manufacturers. If you go through your different manufacturers, in this case, I'll be talking of uh, Doha cables. You go through Doha cables, you look at the different list of their different cable sizes. You see the overall diameter as well, based on the different sizes. It could either be two core, the size of the cable, maybe two core 1.5 square mm cable. It could either be two core. 16 square mm cable, it, it could either be three core 16 mm cable, it could either be four core 16. So it depends on the different sizes of the different cables. So all the different sizes of the cables come with a different overall diameter. So if you're taking the construction, the minimum bending radius, it varies with the different sizes of cables. So after computing, you ensure that it does not exceed its minimum bending radius. It's very important because it's going to have an impact as far as electrons flowing through the cable. The fourth point, avoid double banking. This is very important. You avoid cables running across each other. This is very important. The fifth point, Maintain 20% space factor between cables it is very important. 20% space factor. As you can see here, look at this graphic. They pull the cable and they maintain 20% space factor. This is very important. Avoid double banking. This is the first point which I mentioned. Avoid crossing over cables on top and other cables. Provide cable tie at a uniform interval. It is very important as well. Look at here, we have cable ties which have been provided after cables have been pulled on this cable ladder. So the seven point, we now talk of provide cable identification. This is very important. It can either be a temporary cable identification, but must be provided after cables have been pulled or permanent and graph tagging, which you need to provide after the cable is being pulled, glanded and termination as well, terminated as well. The eighth point, which is maintain 20% Space factor between cables and provide cable tire at uniform interval. Okay, this point I already mentioned this already. So I have to remove from the list. So after the cables have been pulled, what we have to do now is we now have to carry out testing of that cable prior to doing termination or glanding and termination. So we carry out different inspections for that particular cable. Instruments are calibrated and up to date. This is very important. You have to make sure that the instrument or the measuring instruments that are being used for the different uh, uh, testing for that cable, they are all calibrated and up to date. This is very important. As an inspector, you have to make sure that you follow this into consideration. Perform continuity tests using a multimeter by shorting one end 
of the line and test the other end, which is, it could either be face to neutral, face to earth, neutral to earth, face to face, depending on the type of supply, maybe three phase, maybe single phase and all that. So it will notify by a sound to attest there is continuity. So you carry out continuity and you ensure that there is continuity and you have to record as well. If you are an inspector, you record as well prior to submitting to the consultant for review and approval. So we have a next step, next test as well, which should be carried out, which is you perform insulation resistant tests by using an insulation resistant tester or a mega tester. You now test between phase and neutral, phase and earth and neutral and earth to ensure that we have a value which is greater than one or equal to one mega ohm. This is very important. So this value will give us a full guarantee. I've done a video on this as well. If you want um, a deep insight on this, go to the different videos and you just select, you see there on testing, inspection and testing, I've done a video on how to carry out continuity tests and insulation resistant tests, as well as different tests, as far as BS7671 is concerned. So once the cables all have been pulled, we have to ensure that we move now to the next step, which is very important. So the next step now will be a release of clearance to proceed with final fix. So we we'll now be carrying out final fix. Final fix now will be the third fix, device installation. It could be either carrying out installation of uh, socket outlets, light fixtures, data outlets, etc. So I will take us now to a chart which I prepared, which is uh, elaborating different locations as well as to ensure that you check the IRs or inspection requests for the different services if they are all approved prior to giving clearance for the different areas which are requested. So the first we'll be talking of uh, the room. We mentioned the room number, we mentioned the room name. We now mentioned as well the ID inspection request number. We're mentioning there for that particular service. It could either be lighting, it could ever be power. We mentioned now the status of it. Maybe it's approved. We come now. So you have to prepare this log so that you'll be able to track as well as to know if the different areas have been released or it's not released. So when you release, you know, okay, this area has been released based on this. The IS have been approved. The MEP inspection request as well has been approved. So for the inspection request for MEP, you have to make sure that you check everything which is above four ceiling. In this case, it's focused mostly on the ceiling clearances. So you make sure that you check all the different components that have been installed above four ceiling. The final fix, for example, we might be talking of the mechanical team have installed an FCU, so we have to give power to it. So by giving power to it, we need to pull cables, do GI conduits are all the first fix, and the second fix is confirmed, is uh, done as well and is approved. We now have to proceed with installing either FCU control panels, either installing um, spore outlets. So we have to make sure that we, we install all the risk inspection as well, get approval prior to giving ceiling closure. We could be talking as well of fire alarm system. We have smooth detectors that have been installed above four ceiling. When we're talking of Wi-Fi, so we have to make sure that we install our that there are uh, our patch cords as well. We install them above four ceiling prior to installing the final fix for probably the Wi-Fi, the light fixtures, and all that. So when we give clearance for the ceiling, we ensure that all these different things have been put in place. We we'll move as well to wall. We make sure all the different outlets have been. Uh, is, uh, we 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 make sure that all the different aspects have been taken into consideration. The first fix, second fix have been taken into consideration prior to giving the clearance for the wall clearance, as well as the floor. Probably we have wall uh, floor boxes. We have to make sure that we finish already with the first fix, the second fix. We've positioned all the different items as per the ID, which is we follow now the floor. Um, the floor finishes uh, layout of the ID or in the interior design drawing. So we take into consideration all that prior to giving clearance for the different areas as mentioned. So before, after we've given clearance now for the different areas, now we move into test fix. So the test fix now, we have to make sure that we check and to ensure that preceding activities is completed and approved. What is the 
with the certain activities now, we talk of the first fix and the second fix. So the first fix we made mention of GI or PVC conduits, we made mention of uh, cable trade, cable trunkings, cable ladders, all that have been done. Now we now move to the final fix. So if it is all approved, we can now proceed with installing of the final fixtures. So the second point we talk of, ensure clearance is released, signed and approved for the set areas of for the different locations. So once that is done, we now start checking the installation of the final fix to ensure it is installed as per the latest and approved interior design drawing. This is very important. You now start looking at the interior design drawing. If we are talking of wall, we start looking at the section drawings. We look at the different details, the height of the socket outlets, the height of the data outlets. We look at the distances which they have been installed. It matches with the interior design drawing, which is a section drawing. And then also we look at the final fix which we've installed. Maybe we've installed light fixtures on the ceiling, on the ceiling. So we have to make sure we check the reflected ceiling plan or the RCP to ensure that the different dimensions which we have followed, it's as per the RCP and matches with what is installed on site, which is very important. Also with the floors, we ensure that we check the floor, the, the floor devices that have been installed. It could be uh, floor boxes, for particular services, or probably we need to install maybe a table that is going to serve that particular table or that particular deck. So you have to make sure that you check and take into consideration all that, look at the dimension and make sure that it's been installed as per the different IDs or the different interior design drawings. So I made mention of uh, the different drawings that we have to refer to. For wall, refer to the section or elevation detail drawings. For ceiling, refer to reflected ceiling plan or the RCP. And then also for the floor, we refer to the floor finishing plan, which is very important. So this is to ensure proper positioning and dimensions are followed to avoid clashes with other services and maintain proper architectural finishes. This is very important. So we carry out all this to ensure that we will not have any clashes between different services will avoid all these clashes. And also the architectural finishes is going to be of quality as well, which is very important and as per project specification. So um, this is just to give us a guide and also to give us an idea on how to carry out different inspections. It could either be first fix, second fix, or the third fix. What are the different things that you have to take into consideration before carrying out this different inspection? Or probably before submitting to the consultant for review and approval is very important. Until then, you're watching Makoka Enterprises.